Hello, good morning. I hope that you're having an amazing day. I am because the sun is out for the first time in like four days and we had a very quick onslaught of cold weather and I saw this morning that it was like some cold front that came out from Canada. So thank you to our neighbors upstairs. <laughs> I actually was trying to be a little lazy and not bring them in, but then I just was like, you know what, no. I have not worked this hard for these plants and like stressed over them all summer that they would be okay to just let them perish in the cold weather. So please clap for me, I brought them in. I'm filming on a short tripod today, which is really a major disservice to the size of Mama Monstera, but I wanted to show you guys what she's looking like now. And I'm not showing her best side because there is some yellow leaves and i think honestly that might be due to the cold temps at the end when she was out there but when we brought her inside you guys like we had to work like kind of extra hard to pull her inside because there was like vines and roots growing into the soil underneath the plant um not from the pot but like the vines were like starting to crawl across the floor um, outside. I guess the outside floor is called ground, Becca. I always mess that up. Anyway. <laughs> also, there was a part that was starting to crawl up my fence, which was really cool. And I so wish that I could have left it outside, but obviously it would never survive in those temps. So she is inside for the season. And I have not mentioned this really, but just a like, I don't know, briefly mention it. I am, I did hire someone to finish my greenhouse because there's only like a couple of small tasks left, but I'm not gonna be able to do them like me. So I hired somebody to finish it and he's been coming like once a week for a couple weeks. And I think that he's gonna be done pretty soon. So hopefully this will be temporary them being in here um, because I said that I wanted to have these plants in there for the winter. We will see if I'm able to do that. Honestly, once the heater is installed, I should be able to put them in there and I think he's gonna work on that like next week. That wasn't like the top priority because we wanted to get it like completely closed in first, which I think at this point it is completely closed in and airtight. So anyway, that's exciting. I've removed a lot of the leaves that looked kind of bad. Everything that's left is, hold on, let me just double check. Oh, there's a few more. This plant has so many leaves. Um, so if you'll remember when I put it outside, I was ready to just toss this plant. Like I was over it, beyond over it. It had been looking really bad for a long time and I was just kind of like, not exactly embarrassed by it, but kind of because it was one of the plants that like everybody always asked about and like wanted to see, but it was looking so bad because you know, it had reached the top of its pole and I thought, well, now that it's done that, it's not gonna put out any big leaves and it's just not gonna be very impressive. But in the months that it was living outside, it did actually put out some really big leaves towards the top of the plant, which I was super surprised by. So yeah, and it just looks really beautiful and super happy. Like, look at this, look at how big that is. That's incredible and it's beautiful. The fenestrations on this leaf are gorgeous. So ideally this would stay in this room because I don't want it to have to travel too far anywhere else in the house because it's um, not heavy, but it's just awkward to carry. But like she takes up a ton of real estate. So I don't really know where to put her. Uh. And I also have like a million vines now. Look, this is where it started rooting into the ground. Incredible, so cool. I think I'm gonna put it like right here because I don't, yeah, again, I don't really know where else to put it, where it's not gonna be like majorly in the way. Got one of these roller things that I'm gonna set it on top of. Oh my gosh, girl. Oh, okay. That is our temporary solution. She's gonna live there. And then I have my ficus, which I usually line up. Oh my gosh, are you so excited? Nora is sitting in a bouncer in this room, just chilling with me. Um, yeah, so I also have my ficus that I normally put in front of the sliding glass door, but I think I'm gonna have to put them somewhere else. Okay, everybody's burning question. 
did I do any spraying or cleaning of these plants before I brought them in? No. Was that kind of dumb? Possibly. Let me be real with you guys. This is real plant ownership for me. I don't usually do much to bring them back in. Like I just make sure there's no frogs living on them and then I bring them in. I've never really done anything beyond like spraying them down really hard. And like if I was suspicious, I sprayed them with like insecticidal soap or whatever pesticide I had on hand. And then I brought them in. Typically when I bring in my plants, it's been cold for a couple weeks. Like I know that I say to bring them in around like 50 degrees. That is what I say and that is what you should do. But I left them out there and it was like 38 degrees. I don't suggest that. I've been like nervous that I was going to see like delayed cold shock or something like that. But they did really, they did fine. And it's been a couple days that they've been in here and I haven't noticed anything. So that is probably my record for how long I've kept houseplants outside. 38 degrees, that's super cold and I do not recommend doing that. Do as I say, not as I do at all good teachers say. <laughs> Since it was so cold, I pretty much assumed that any bug was gonna be gone and burrowing somewhere else. Now, if they are burrowing in the soil, I will find out soon enough, but again, I've been doing this for many years and I have never had any bug come in, especially when I leave them outside, at least until like 40, 50 degrees. But I'm not gonna say that could never happen, so definitely take the precautions that you feel safe doing. Um, sometimes I see people completely repot these plants and give them all new soil. I personally am not gonna do that because I use Dela Tanks, and Dela Tanks is a precious resource in this household, <laughs> and I'm not gonna just, you know, throw a bunch of it away just for the sake of hopefully not bringing in bugs, uh, but that's just a personal choice that I'm making. You make the choices that feel right for you, uh, but just know that it, there is a possibility that you could be bringing in bugs. Again, I never have had that issue, but it is possible, okay? <laughs> the next plant that I'm going to find a home for is this. My Monstera Deliciosa. And let me tell you, this plant, it just grew so much. And this is one that I was always nervous about putting outside because I just was like not sure how it would do. And like it was really, really special to me. And I just didn't want anything bad to happen. But I was like, why am I having this like weird mindset around this specific plant? Like it's highly replaceable, although it is very sentimental if I lost it. But Mama Monstera was doing really great and they're the same species, so like, I kind of felt better about doing it. Or not species, they're the same genus, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, this is one of the leaves that it put out while it was out there. It's just like insanely big and beautiful and there's some in here that are even bigger that it put out, like this leaf down here is huge, 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 huge. And the leaves that it was putting out before that were like this big, you can see like, much smaller and yeah so i'm just really happy that i decided to do that but i do now have the problem of um now this plant is very big and very heavy and monstera deliciosa is one of those plants that if you don't train it and like move it in the direction that you want it to move it will decide the direction it's going to go on its own so i have tried really hard to keep it growing upright so that it doesn't do whatever it wants. But this summer outside might have derailed it because there's a lot going on here and we are in like 80 different directions. I'm gonna need something like very strong to hold this up. I do think I'm gonna have it live in the greenhouse. So I don't know how like important taming it is actually gonna be because I kind of just plan on letting it be a wild girl out there. But I would like to find a way for it to like stand upright because like I said, Monstera will just kind of do whatever they want if you don't tell them where to go. They have a tendency to just like grow horizontally, which is beautiful, but it takes up a ton of space and most people don't like that, myself included. We are going to find a way to make her stand upright. And you know, a big problem in this is this stem down here is really long because the plant is old. We had some leaf loss down here and I have considered like chopping it like right here and re-establishing the plant like lower, but I'm like having cold feet about doing it and I don't know if I want to. Oh, yeah, because you would mean I'd have to like start over the root system and this is a lot of foliage to support off of a new root system. 
but like I do feel like that's probably the best option because I'm supporting like almost two feet of bare stem down here for no reason. So it just makes it like that much harder to make it do what I want. Plant Velcro is a lifesaver and I'm always losing it. And now that I actually know where it is, I should, I should use it. We are just gonna load this up with plant tape because I feel like that's gonna be the only way that I can get it to truly stand up. Up here needs a little help. This next one is doing a Monstera Deliciosa, Delo, de, Monstera Deliciosa classic move and it is doing this. So you can see it has like a very clear curve here and we're gonna try to correct that slowly. This is the plant braces. So basically you just move it very slowly. You don't wanna yank your teeth in the direction you want them to go. You wanna move it slowly so you don't hurt yourself or in this case, hurt the plant. My steak is here. I'm going to shove this into the pot. We start low and secure it down here. Actually, these two pieces I'm gonna combine. That's one of the good things about plant Velcro is you can get two pieces that are separate and join them to make a longer piece. It's not as strong as if it was like one continuous loop, but it is pretty strong still. So I wanted to quickly show you the anatomy of this tape situation. So we have an inner tape which brought in the stems, like the, the major stem here. And then I have an outer tape which brought in all of those leaves. And this was, this is one that I'm gonna be able to tighten over time, but I don't wanna tighten it too much because you can snap the leaves if you put too much pressure on them to bend. However, if you give them time, they will slowly start to move. You can see right here that I've almost pushed it too far because it's starting to do like a little wrinkle. I think that's gonna be fine, but eventually I would love for this piece to straighten out more rather than it bending right here, but this is where we're gonna kinda leave this area. And we've got one last section to tether up, which is this big section here. This one is like pretty straight, although it is trying to do another one of those J turns. So we are going to insert another one of these which actually this is working out pretty well it's pretty sturdy if they were a bit longer it would be better but for just using like kind of what i have on hand it's not bad and you know i have never rebought this plant tape i've always only had the one that i bought the first time around and i think it's because i've been so frugal with it like which is great obviously it goes a long way and you can reuse them which is something that i absolutely love i feel like other plant ties are not as easy to reuse i might use plant tape to just pull this entire thing together at the bottom because i think that would help it to be even even more sturdy so i'm gonna get a piece that's longer than this one I think I'm just gonna keep doing that technique all the way up because I kind of like the way that it pulls it in and kind of squishes it to go straight. The true test is going to be getting this part to go straight up and down here. So I'll show you my POV if I can, but we're just gonna grab, uh, yeah, let's start low. Down here, pull and use leverage from the other stake too. I'm gonna hook those around. So this is just to hold this in place here. And honestly, I think that did the trick for now because now it's leaning up against here and I like that. So I think I'm going to get some tape to put up in here just to make sure it doesn't just like fall off of there. And then that's gonna be it for this plant. The only situation here that I don't love is this. Cause I'd love for this to sit more like that. But I think this is just kind of what we have to deal with because I don't have a long enough piece of wood to like support it to be taller. This plant is almost as tall as me, which is crazy. So she's doing really good. And I just need to figure out where to put it now. It's so heavy. <laughs> It is so heavy. And it used to live in my bedroom underneath a Soltec light. And 
I would put it back there in the exact same spot, but I now have a rocker and a crib in my room and that's just not gonna happen. So I'm thinking I might just put this in Nora's room for now because there isn't a ton in there at this point. Okay, I just brought that Monstera upstairs. <sighs> It's very heavy, I'm wildly out of shape. So, <laughs> the last plant we need to figure out is this one. Now this is my Thematophyllum um, bipinnatum, something like that. Uh, formerly the Philodendron cellum. And if you remember what this plant looked like when I brought it outside at the beginning of the summer, and you see this today, it is truly made a comeback. She takes up a lot of space. Like a lot of space. When I say she takes up a lot of space, this might be like the most widespread plant that I have. I don't know. Should I just also put this one in Nora's room too? Just in like the interim, like while I figure things out? I don't know. I guess that's like the only place that I can put it because I don't have open space literally anywhere else. Definitely not in here. Oh, this one's so much lighter. Thank God. Just for some perspective, this is how big that plant is. Like, it's huge. And the Monstera, equally big. Just like, much more succinct and like, tight and up. I did actually think that I wanted to have a plant in this corner. And I like the idea of putting this one there, like permanently. Um, so we'll see about that. I might be able to put like, move my Soltec light into here for it because I think it would do fine under those types of conditions. Sorry, the lighting in here is not great. It's a little dark and shaded because of our big, beautiful oak tree. That's it, you guys. I am really happy that I did this. Um, again, I was planning on not doing it and then just like hoping for the best with my plants, which honestly would have been fine but I'm glad that I took care of them like a good plant mom. And now I just need to clean up the aftermath of those giant plants just being thrust into my plant room. I just put down these towels because it was raining when we brought them in and they were soaking wet.